Welcome to The Secrets of Stowe House. Today we're going to be looking at the large library and looking at how it links with the Gothic library. So here we are in the antechamber for the Gothic library and these stairs here are going to take us upstairs to the large library, the more public library. So this is the more intimate area going upstairs into the more public area. And as we walk up, just notice the stained glass windows to give a little bit of light colour coming into the area. And as we move up, we can see the fan vaulting that matches the Gothic library, this Henry VII chapel influence, and little face corbels to support that fan vaulting. And then as we move further up the stairs, we can see that additional feature of John Soane architecture with the borrowed light coming through the octagonal lamp. So coming up the back stairs, we're then moving through a little corridor, coming into the back stairs of the library. And if you'd like to follow me, we'll find out what's at the top of these stairs. So if you notice these stairs are much more rudimentary, they're not as smart as the Gothic library steps. So this is definitely a back way into one of the state rooms. So if we open a little secret door, this draws us into the balcony of the large library. So very briefly, the large library starts its life as a ballroom and the coffered ceiling that runs around the edge was here from this time. And then in the 1760s, the room was divided into two rooms with a dining room on one side and a drawing room on the other. And the central panel was put in then so that we had a design of the type that we see now over the dining room, but something different over the drawing room. And then in the 1790s, when it was opened back up into uh, one room to become the library, the panel from the dining room was copied across over to the drawing room side and it became one big room with a matched ceiling. So this balcony here, we think was put in at about 1815 or so. And the little feature that we've just walked through, the door that we've just walked through, you can see is a hidden bookcase so that it just flows along the length of this wall. And what makes it special for when we were restoring this room is the little spine here says SHPT Library Restoration 2010. So that reminds us of the restoration that Stowe House Preservation took, undertook in 2010. So if you'd like to follow me, we'll just walk around the room. And it's really lovely to be able to see the library from up here. You can see that it's still a fully functioning working school library. to this east side of the room and we can see that we're passing a door beneath us. Now that door leads to the blue room which was originally a manuscript room or the anti-library that looked almost identical to this room with floor to ceiling mahogany bookcases and it had a corresponding balcony on the other side of this wall. So this door here, we can tell not only by the fake book spines here, but also the cuts in the uh, rail above, we can tell that this is the false door that originally linked into the balcony on the other side, into the room the other side, which no longer exists. And here again, we have the spine that says SHPT Library Restoration 2010. And then if we look round through the whole length of the room, which is a really beautiful way to see the room, we can see the beautiful 
lanterns, the three lanterns that were donated to us by an old stoic's widow, an old boy's widow, um, and these really do cast a beautiful effect of light across the room and were taken from an 1820 drawing of the room. And when they were made, the manufacturer said they'd never seen anything in their pattern books like this. So they are unique to stone.